All right, going to make a video refuting and exposing this rather foolish strawman argument accountable KJV makes to defend his blasphemous heresy that Jesus Christ had sinful flesh while, while on the earth. The Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, you know, the Lord of glory had sinful flesh while, while on the earth. I've shown the clips in other videos of him saying that, but... You know, in this video, he is responding to JT, and you know, JT does just a prideful, arrogant little jerk who, you know, really ought to not be trying to get into ministry. I've done my videos exposing him and rebuking him, so you can watch those if you want to hear more about that. But he basically is responding to JT, and I listened to the video, and a lot of what he brought up is, you know, valid points, stuff that I would agree with. You know, the fact that young kids ought to not be getting into full time ministry, and like I said, I apply it to myself as well. I'm uh, turning 21 this year. And I uh, do not believe someone try uh, a, a young man ought to be trying to get into ministry until they're at least in their 30s, which, you know, is a side issue. I've covered that in other videos, but most of what he said I would agree with. But he then starts, respond, starts to respond to JT's criticism of his blasphemous heresy and totally uh, just twists his words and uses this full-on strawman argument when JT points out the fact that 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 18-19 to 19, talks about the blood of Christ being without spot and without blemish. And how if Christ had a sinful flesh, his blood would not be uh, per, uh, basically be perfect. And I'll, I'll cover the scriptures on the matter, but watch what he says and watch how he totally strawmans what JT says. He lied again. And he said that there were certain things to, uh, like, uh, you know, that we were saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. Not We were redeemed by, uh, not by corruptible things, but by the precious blood of Christ. Yeah, little boy, that's long been covered. Yeah. By the blood, not the flesh, you little idiot. Yes. Okay, let me give a brief overview of what was going on. So basically, the crux of JT's argument, and again, you know, JT is a, an arrogant novice who ought to step down from ministry, but this is where I'd agree with him on, you know. He uses the uh, first Peter chapter one verse eighteen to nineteen to show that Christ having sinful flesh would make his blood imperfect. And Brad lies and makes it out like JT was saying that the flesh redeems us as opposed to the blood redeeming us. You saw in the clip there he was making that out. This is a straw man argument. The reason because he's saying that having sinful flesh would by extension make his blood sinful. That is what he was saying. He was not saying that the flesh is what redeems us. Again, not trying to, you know, uh, white knight for JT, because obviously he's still a prideful, arrogant novice who ought to not be trying to be a, a minister at his age, but this is where he's right on. You know, where, where he's right, he's right. It's that simple. Uh, and he was not saying that the flesh is what redeems us. Brad lied, okay? The reason why having, if Christ had sinful flesh, the reason why it would make his blood imperfect is just the fact that the reason why the animal sacrifices could not fully wash away sins is because the animals were made of corrupt bodies of flesh themselves. So if Christ had a corrupt body of flesh, then his sacrifice w would be no different than the animal sacrifices when you get down to the crux of the matter. What saith the scriptures? Hebrews chapter 10, verse 1 to 4. For the law, having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the things that sorry, that things can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually, make the corners thereunto perfect. For then would they not have ceased to be offered, because that the worshippers once purged should have had no more conscience of sins. But in those sacrifices there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. You know, and if Christ had sinful flesh, you see, you compare scripture with scripture, see the animal sacrifices, they could cover your sins. But the reason why they went to Abraham's bosom, uh, you, you can read about Abraham's bosom in Luke chapter 16, verse 22 to 26. They went to Abraham's bosom because the, the animal sacrifices not only could it not wash away, not only could one of those sacrifices not wash away all sins, past, present and future, it could cover their sins, but it could not wash it away like the pure blood of Christ could. Okay. But if Christ had sinful flesh, it would be no different than the animal sacrifices, plain and simple. Uh, Christ was the perfect sinless sacrifice that could wash away all sins and could basically provide an atonement of a manner that the animal sacrifice, that basically no amount of animal sacrifices could do. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 10 to 14. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all, and every high priest standeth daily ministering and offering a sometimes, oftentimes the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God, from henceforth expecting till his enemies be made his footstool, for by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. Uh, Hebrews chapter 9 verse 11 to 14. 
And these are also really good scriptures to use against the pagan, occult, Roman Catholic mass too, by the way. Uh, Hebrews chapter 9, verse 11 to 14. But Christ, being come and high priest of good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of an heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctifies to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Notice there, it's in contrast to the to the imperfect animal sacrifices. And again, you just compare scripture with scripture. Why were these animal sacrifices imperfect? They could cover your sins, but why could they not do what the blood of Christ can do? Why? Because they had corrupt bodies of flesh. Okay. Thus, their blood was not the sinless, pure blood of Christ. It could not amount to that. So, you know, you just compare scripture with scripture. Uh, these, also, another verse I want to cover too, by the way, this was this wasn't in my notes, just kind of on the spot. Hebrews chapter 9, verses 24 to 28. For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. Nor yet that he should offer himself often as the high priest entereth into the holy place every year with the blood of others. For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world, but now once... In the end of the world, hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Uh, and as it is appointed unto man once to die, but after this the judgment, so Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Okay? Uh, again, compare scripture with scripture. If Christ was had corrupt sinful flesh while on the earth, and again, Romans 8.3 says he was made in the likeness of sinful flesh. Okay, being made in the likeness of something does not mean you are that thing. Mankind is made in the image and likeness of God. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 and 27. But that doesn't mean we are like demigods or something. You know, it's that simple. Uh, Christ had to be, had, could not have sinful flesh on the earth because his blood would have not been perfect at that point. So don't be deceived by the lies of accountable KJV or his little cronies who just essentially call everybody Jesuits who don't agree with his doctrine. It's that simple. It's a bunch of garbage. It's a cult is what it is. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.